about to see The world in action What we can be Life with no distractions We'll get away This is what we waited for Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another week of family meal ideas If you are new here then my name is Vicky and we are a family of five Myself, my husband and our three growing boys and this is just a look at the kind of things I've managed to make with the ingredients I've managed to get this week. If you do like this kind of video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and please go and hit the subscribe button. I do a lot of kind of food and lifestyle content on this channel. At the moment, I'm doing weekly meal ideas. I'm also doing like what I buy in the supermarkets for our weekly shop and I'm doing weekly vlogs at the moment as well. So from now on, I'm gonna be uploading those on a Sunday morning just a little snippet of what we've done throughout the week and I thought if I upload them on a Sunday morning then you can decide if you want to watch them or when you want to watch them and they're just there. I am continuing with the boys room makeovers, it's quite difficult because obviously we can't get out to buy things that we need so I have still got more bits to do in their rooms and some things that we ordered pre-lockdown have arrived like curtains and rugs and that so I will show you all that in a probably in a weekly vlog rather than doing a separate room makeover because like I said it's sort of coming in dribs and drabs and that like we haven't got the right paint we need and all that kind of thing so I'm definitely going to be doing lots of renovation projects and just a little look into how we're handling lockdown life. So let's go and take a look at what we've had this right, week. So for tonight's dinner I'm going to be making a slow cooker beef stew or casserole whatever you want to call it and I've just started my prep, I've got my iPad set up, I've just been watching some YouTube while I have peeled and chopped this mammoth amount of veg. So we've got four onions, this is basically just throw everything in kind of stew. I've got some carrots, I think there's about six or eight in there. Um, a large swede, some parsnips, um, and then where's my potato? Oh. <laughs> and then my potatoes are in the sink. I've chopped and washed those, and I'm going to start assembling it all in the slow cooker. So what I was going to do is I'm going to make because it's a massive meal. I'm going to take a portion for my dad because if you didn't know, my parents live next door, so I can basically leave it on their doorstep, ring on the doorbell, and just leave it there. But what I was trying to say is my mum doesn't eat meat but I still want to make her a stew so I'm going to put everything in the slow cooker, make the sauce and add all my ingredients apart from the beef. I mean she'll still eat like beef flavoured stuff like stock cubes and things, she just doesn't like the physical meat. So I'm going to make it all up and then before I start cooking it I'm going to take some out and put it in a bowl for her and then cook her separately just minus the beef. So let's start adding all this in. Right, so first off I'm going to add in my uh, potatoes and I'm already thinking I need a bigger slow cooker. I'm going to pop my chopped onions on top of that. Carrots. And a large swede. Oh dear. We've got parsnips. I've got beef to fit in here as well. Good job I'm taking some out. Right, so what I'm going to do is find a spoon. Try and sort of stir that together a bit. Um, I might be taking a bit more. Obviously this will all cook down a bit, so. Uh oh. I've got flying carrot and swede. This will all cook down a little bit. And mix them together a little bit so that the onions and everything get mixed around. Um, I'm going to do this one on high because there's so much in it, this is going to take forever to cook. So, the first thing I've got, I've actually sort of kind of cheated, I guess, today. I've got some of these beef casserole mixes I got in Lidl because last time I went in there, I didn't know if I had what I needed at home, so I thought I'd give them a try. So, I've got two of those. And I'm just going to shake those in. Smells quite good. Um, I'm also going to add some gravy that I made for a roast dinner we had. Um, and I didn't use all the gravy, so I'm going to put that in. I'm going to add some Marmite, some Worcester sauce, a beef stock pot or two. And I'm not sure what else. I really think I've got way too much in here. And that's it, I will take some out. That's Hobbs is chasing a carrot around the kitchen if you can hear scrabbling. I'm also going to pop in this gravy. It's 
is like a southern style gravy. I'm going to add some water. tomato puree and a couple of beef stock cubes I think I'm gonna mix up the stock cubes so that they mix in nicely well. right while my kettle is boiling for my stock I'm gonna add a teaspoon or so of marmite that'll come out in a second I'm gonna add some Worcester sauce I'd say probably about two tablespoons. Like I said, I'm not being very exact. I'm just kind of popping it all in and hoping for the best. Rinse the mama off with that with the boiling water in a moment. Uh, I'm gonna put some salt and pepper. There's quite a lot of veg in here. Add my stock. Everything feeds into the liquid. So what I think I'm going to do is I've got this on high. I'm going to leave it on high for maybe an hour. Then I'm going to take out my mum's vegetable portion. What was that? Hobbs has just got the turmeric out of the cupboard. No. Then I'm going to take out my mum's vegetable portion just to give it all a chance to start to sort of warm together. Then I'll add my beef in for the rest of everybody. For everyone else um, and I was hoping to make dumplings go on top as well but we'll see how much this shrinks down whether I'm actually <laughs> gonna fit them in oh I'm throwing onion everywhere as well now right so I'm just gonna put the lid on and leave it on high for an hour before I take out the non-meat portion so I've taken some out for my mum without the meat in and now I'm just gonna seal my beef on a high heat not for very long just so the outer edges have gone brown and then I'm going to pop that in. I just find it helps with the flavour. You can skip this step and put it straight in, but I think it just does intensify it a little bit. Right, so here is our stew pretty much ready. It's been on, I've turned it down to low after a couple of hours on high. And as you can see, it's gone nice and stewy, I suppose. I'm just going to add some um, ale into it because I found it in the cupboard and I thought it might be a good idea to make like a beef and ale stew so I'm going to add about half of this bottle and then I'm probably going to let it cook maybe another half an hour <laughs> fizzing up is that about half the alcohol will cook off so the kids can still eat it it's not a problem I'm just going to stir that through and then I'm going to let that cook a little bit longer Right, so I've let that cook for about another half an hour and now I'm just going to add in a little bit of a cornflour slurry that I've made. It's just cornflour and water and it will thicken it nicely without having to add anything else. I'm going to stir that through. And that will start to get nice and thick. It's still absolutely massive. I'm going to be eating this for days, <laughs> but it smells really good. And the only the other thing I've done now is I've just made up some dumplings. I had lots and lots of suggestions. I've gone with the most simple one, which was just margarine and self-raisin flour. So I'm just going to pop these in on top and leave it for about half an hour now. And then we'll be done. Yeah, so our beef stew is all done and it is looking good. I didn't realise the dumplings were going to swell up quite so much. But I think they're done. I don't know, you tell the dumplings are done. They look pretty firm. So I'm going to dish some up and then I'm going to put some in a bowl for my dad or in a tub. And then my mum's is cooking. I've just got hers in here. And I've just popped a couple of little dumplings in there. So once they're cooked, I can put that in to one side. And then I'll just drop it on their doorstep and... <laughs> Ring the bell and run away. <laughs> yeah, hello. My little delivery person. Uh, yeah, so this is our beef show. I'll show you in a minute when I've plated it up. 
Right, so here we are dished up. We've just got our beef stew with some dumplings. I've put three on the top of this one. They look really nice and fluffy. And this is what we've got for our dinner tonight. Pop a beef and ale right, stew. So I'm just about to start tonight's dinner. And in response to my video asking if people want to see like ideas of how to stretch your food, how to save on food waste and things. I thought the first meal I make, it was ironic really that I got my potatoes out and they've sprout or started to sprout. Now, I've always used potatoes when they've been sprouting like this um, and I've never ever had a problem. But I thought as this is a channel on YouTube and obviously members of the public are watching this, I thought I'd Google it. And the exact science, I don't know, I won't quote, but basically they are perfectly safe to eat once they've sprouted. Just cut the sprouts off and they'll be fine. The exception to that is if they are soft, wrinkly, or green. Now, all these are hard. I mean, I can feel them. They're all rock hard as fresh as normal. And like I said, I've been using sprouting potatoes for years because it's just the potatoes sending out shoots to reproduce. Is that the right word? Probably not. Reseed. You know what I mean. But Hobbs, could you not with the bone? Thank you. So, if you have, if you are down to your last pack of potatoes and you're finding they've got sprouts, Personally, I wouldn't throw them all away. I would just cut off the sprouts, make sure they're not green and shrivelly, and use them as normal. Make sure you wash them, boil them thoroughly. And it did say on the internet, I mean, obviously check it yourself as well, do your research, but rather than throwing them straight in the bin, I just thought I'd mention it. I've always used them like this. It's up to you if you do or don't. But apparently, according to Google, perfectly safe just to cut the sprouts off and safely throw in your potatoes in the bin because let's face it at the moment none of us really want to waste any food if we don't absolutely have to. But I just use a knife and just literally just clear off the sprouting parts and then I'm going to do these with some chilli. You can see there's just a little sprouty bit there so I just use a knife and just pick it off and then it's fine I mean I'm just going to do that with all these potatoes and then I'm not sure what else <laughs> I'm going to do with them you could peel them if you were going to peel them I'm thinking of leaving the skin off this one has a green patch on it so I'm not going to use that that one will have to go in the bin but this one's not green at all still completely firm it's just got the sprouts on and obviously these are going to all be scrubbed anyway so I'll just cut those off and then continue to make whatever it is I'm making so I've decided I'm going to make some little potatoes in the air fryer so I've just scrubbed the skins, chopped them up I'm just going to put them in my air fryer basket spray some oil on them and just press the chip button on here and it will do the work for me put some seasoning, I'll probably do garlic powder, onion powder, salt pepper and maybe some smoked paprika and then that's it, it takes about half an hour and you just shake them halfway through and then I'll just put the chilli with them and some grated cheese Right, so this is then with the seasoning on. I've only done garlic powder, smoked paprika and some oil, uh, spray oil and some salt because I can't find any onion powder. I think I've run out. And that's it. I just turn it on and do the french fry one. Um, and then press play. And off it goes. 25 minutes. So to go with the potatoes, I've just got this out of the freezer, it's not ice cream, it's just a tub I use, any tub comes in handy. Um, looking at it, I think it's a, mm, I think it's turkey chilli, I don't know, I think it's turkey chilli with butter beans, I've got a feeling I made that a little while ago, um, I should have labelled it but I didn't, that's a good tip, always label, because this just says Kelly's got it ice cream. But I know what's in there, most times I'm pretty good, especially with butter beans because I think I bought them by mistake, I don't know. Anyway, so I'm just going to heat this up in the microwave and serve it up. So here it is dished up, I've just put the chilli on top of the potatoes, they've come out really nice and crispy. So I've grated a tiny bit of cheese on top, it actually looks like a lot but that was another tip I was going to say. Obviously everyone's got a cheese grater, but instead of using the big side here, if you, siren, if you use one of the smaller side, it grates the cheese a lot finer and it makes it go a bit further because it kind of sprinkles more, if you know what I mean. So you don't use as much cheese, but it still seems to cover really well and melt nicely. So a little tip if you're short on cheese. And yeah, that's what we've got tonight. Freezer, chilli with beans in, potatoes and some cheese. So for dinner tonight, we've got these Young's Gastro Fish Bakes. Um, they're cheese and leek, they're just pieces of cod with like cheese and leek topping and then we've just done um, two small jacket potatoes with them and some salad and a little bit of grated cheese so 
that is what we're having for dinner tonight and there's a little bit of salad cream on the salad as well so for tonight's dinner we had a roast pork roast dinner and I did some pork with crackling, I did carrots, roasted leeks, some marifat peas, roast potatoes and some homemade Yorkshire puddings and gravy and thanks to everyone who suggested about the crackling it came out amazingly and everybody was very impressed. And here it is, my first ever attempt at a pineapple upside down cake. I didn't have the right ingredients. I used margarine instead of butter and dark brown sugar instead of light, light, uh, what is it? Light soft brown sugar, but it looks pretty good. I'm quite impressed. I don't know what it tastes like, but it looks good. tonight I have made a chicken and chickpea curry I've just used chicken breast and I pop the tin of chickpeas in just to kind of bulk it out a little bit and add a little bit more protein and we're just having it with some boiled rice so this is what we've got tonight and these are just the jar sauces with the seasoning on top that you can get in Lidl right so for tonight's dinner I've done the boys some jacket potatoes they've got tuna grated cheese and some salad it's got beetroot tomato olives cucumber spring onion and lettuce i think that's it <laughs> so we've got oscars and then jake's one and this one is bailey's he's just minus the tomato and the boys are having theirs now steve and i are going to have ours a little bit later on and steve and i just had some chicken thighs done on the grill with some halloumi some roasted vegetables we've got red onion courgette and mushroom and some dofamar potatoes these are the ones you get in like the vacuum sealed pack in Lidl. and that's what we had for our dinner so that's it for this video i hope you've enjoyed it and i hope you're all doing well or as well as you can be you have to excuse my face um, I've got two really bad cold sores and I feel like it's the elephant in the room if I don't mention it. I always get cold sores when I get like anxious or stressed out or run down. I don't think there's anyone in the world at the moment that isn't stressed out. So I know I'm not the only one but I just thought I'd mention it. I haven't had an accident. They just pop up when I get into a bit of a stress. But leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you're doing and what things are like for you at the moment. And remember my inbox is always open to chat. And so many of you keep taking me off on the offer and it's absolutely lovely. I feel like I'm getting to know you all. So make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you are notified if I upload any extra videos. And I will be back very soon with another one. Take care guys. This is what we waited for.